Well, I haven't done a video at 10 a.m. in a long time. I actually am supposed to be recording a uh, video today with the ambassador, Jace and Michael. And uh, uh, anyway, I don't know if I was supposed to say that name, but I did anyway. <laughs> anyway, uh, I haven't been able to reach the ambassador since earlier this morning and I'm going to go ahead and record a video for tomorrow and when we record the other video we'll put it up when we put it up. In any case this is going to be for the 27th of September and the title that I've selected is We Are Facing Challenges at Every Level. Let's face it, the world is stressed out. If you aren't feeling it, chances are you may be living in denial, not paying attention to the energies of change swirling everywhere. I know many try to stay out of the storm, and various means are used to accomplish this, from drugs and alcohol to spiritual practices. Try as we might, however, I do not think anyone will escape, no matter to which of the perceived factions you think you belong. Our individual and collective shadow, the underworld, is coming up for all of us to witness. How we choose to respond is up to each one of us. As painful as it is, we have to see what we have created collectively if we ever expect to transform it. <laughs> I wrote that because I'm feeling the challenges at every level. I'm feeling it in relationship to my home, in relationship to the legal system in the United States and around the world. I'm facing it spiritually as I uh, encounter resistance to certain things that are going on in my life and as I, uh, I'm trying to bring balance and harmony to everything and, and make sense of it all. Uh, yes, I spend time meditating trying to quiet myself and center myself, and I think that's a good practice. It's an essential practice. Nevertheless, the energies swirl. The situations that I have to face are real. They are in my life. They are not an illusion. They are things that have to be done. I can deny them till I'm blue in the face. It's not going to make them go away. Now, if you have found a way to make them actually go away by pretending they're not there, uh, I'd like to know how you've managed to do it, because I've never managed to do it in my life at all. Yes, there have been times that I have felt like I'm walking on cloud nine. There have been times that I've been blissed out of my, of my mind, which is a good thing to be blissed out of. <laughs> and uh, yes, I have felt really connected from the heart at different times in my life. And if you're going through any of those things, I'm not trying to belittle the place where you are. All I'm trying to do is to suggest that we all need to wake up and face the things about ourselves, both individually and collectively, that have been difficult for us to face. The things we would like to turn off, the things we'd like to run away from, the things we'd like to avoid, the things we don't even want to admit. I don't care if you're one of the elite establishment that are labeled psychopaths because look at the world that you're supposedly in control of. That supposedly you're one of the authority figures. You're one of the ones that calls the shots. You're living in the ivory towers and you have all the wealth you could ever imagine and yet you're stressed out. Oh yeah, as uh, Aristo said, psychopaths are terrified. Why wouldn't they be terrified? They have no clue that they're connected to everything and that the things that they think they're doing to others that aren't them is coming back to haunt them whether they like it or not. So even, even the rulers, the would-be dictators of the world, even they are being stressed out because whether they like to admit it or not, people are waking up more and more every single day. But the people that are waking up are also stressed out because the changes aren't coming fast enough, because we're on edge, because we realize how bad it really is, those, that are, those of us that are awake. We realize that the earth is, that the world is on a precipice. And the decisions that are being made 
are going to affect everybody. Will there be World War III? Will they use nuclear weapons? Will they create famine on the earth? Will they create earthquakes and, and, uh, and massive, massive tsunamis that flood the coastlines all over the world? There are people actually, people on both sides, get this, people that are religious, people that are spiritual, that actually want the cataclysms to come. And of course, there are people in the elite establishment that want nothing more than the fulfillment of Bible prophecy and other prophecies of Nostradamus and others. They want these things fulfilled because they want to create as much chaos as they possibly can because they feed off the energy of fear. They feed off the energy of terror and they themselves are terrified that they might not be able to control it. And I hope they're right. I hope they're not able to control it. And I don't think they are. I don't think they will be. No matter what, I do believe that we have the capability of turning all of those prophecies of nightmare scenarios into something that is beyond our wildest expectations. And I'd like to be able to say from God that it is not my will that any perish, but that everybody wakes up, embraces their shadow and transforms it, embraces their demons and transform the demons, that everybody on the planet might open our the eyes of our heart and open our understanding to wisdom, to embrace wisdom, that we are in this thing together. If we are destroying each other, if you are in a job that calls on you to harm others against their will, that's policemen, that's attorneys, that's judges, that's CEOs of corporations, that's people in, in the media, that's people in, uh, in education. That's people at all levels of the society, of the matrix structure, that are employed to harm others, to steal, to, to incarcerate, to threaten, to intimidate, to coerce, to manipulate. Now, some people just do those things naturally because they don't know any better, maybe or because they're so stressed out that they try to find any possible solution, even if it's hurting someone else to divert the pain that they're feeling within themselves. Oh yeah, we have all sorts of defense mechanisms that we have created for years, years, lifetimes even, lifetimes. We've created these defense mechanisms on how to react to situations without healing the root cause. But I believe if I could give a word from God, God is saying, I want you to look at the root cause. The root cause is you think you're separate. The root cause is you think you can be an island unto yourself. You think you can do things that affect other people that aren't going to have any blowback on you, that the boomerang's not going to come back and get you. Well, I'm trying to tell you, God might be saying, you can't get away with that anymore. The die is cast. The handwriting is on the wall. It's time for you to pay attention. You are weighed in the balances and found wanting. Who is that said to? All of us. All of us. Every one of us is weighed in the balances and found wanting. We can lie to ourselves and pretend it's not so, but it is so because we're here. We haven't resolved the issues. It's time to resolve and bring resolution to the problems that we face. And we can do it peacefully or we can do it cataclysmically. I think the choice is really up to us. How are we going to respond to the swirling chaos in the world, to the swirling energies that seem to be tearing apart the very structure of our human society that has existed for such a long time, but now it's being threatened at its very core, and we're aware that it's being threatened. Even if we're trying hard not to be aware, we're aware that we are on the brink of either the greatest renaissance the world has ever known or the greatest catastrophe and cataclysm that the world has ever seen. Which is it going to be? Are we going to create World War III? Are we going to let the cabal 
inflame the whole Middle East through their bombing of Syria, trying to get Assad out of power, supposedly fighting ISIS, that the very cabal itself created through the Mossad and the CIA and other three-letter agencies and intelligence agencies that are not very intelligent. Because you can't do war somewhere without, without, the, uh, without the effects of that war coming back. Cause and effect. It's blowback time. It's boomerang time. It's going to come back and it's going to get you. It doesn't matter how much you think you have as far as power and authority, how many bunkers you've created for yourself to hide underground in the caves and in the underground cities that you've built. It doesn't matter how high your ivory tower might be. It's coming to get you. We are going to face challenges at every level until we resolve this problem of living together in a society on the planet called Earth. It's a beautiful planet. It could produce enough to feed twice as many people as we have if we would stop the nonsense of a military industrial complex that only worries about doing the wrong thing to everybody. I mean, it's insanity multiplied. Exponential multiplication. I mean, it's out of control. It's out of control. And the people that are trying to control it and bring it in line with their long-term vision of a world that they can dominate and control and reap the benefits of, I mean, my God, give them a break. They are facing their own demons. Whether they like it or not, whether they think they want to uh, worship Lucifer or worship the, de the dark side and call themselves Illuminati, whether they think they're going to do that or not, it's coming back. This is the day of reckoning. This is the day of the Lord. This is the day where Jubilee is possible. And there are those trying to stop the Jubilee. There are those that even want to do good that actually are pulling, are pulling for the Bible prophecies of cataclysm to be fulfilled because they want the Bible to be true. Or the Quran, or the Bhagavad Gita or Nostradamus, or Edgar Cayce, or any of the prognosticators. But this is now. This is today. We have the ability today to, to turn it all around. What choices are we going to make? How are we going to handle the situation that we find ourselves in at the end of September in 2014? How are we going to do it? Are we going to keep doing what we've always done so that we can keep getting what we've always gotten? Are we going to keep locked in to a prophecies of doom, whether written by a prophet in the Bible or a prophet in some other religion or religious text or somebody that just tries to figure it out by, al al uh, uh, I don't even know how to say that word, al algorithms uh, using, using data put forth on the internet. <laughs> and uh, however the prognosticators are, it's not going to happen the way we think it is. I don't think it's going to happen the way any of us think it is. I don't have all the answers. If you're looking to me to have the answers, I'm sorry, I don't have them. I do the best I can. I take one day at a time. I handle the situations that are before me. That's all I can do. All I can do is keep doing what I've done to the best of my ability to try to wake people up and to try to live myself in personal integrity being honest with myself and being honest with the people that I talk to, to the best of my ability, not compromising my own integrity. Because if I compromise my own integrity and can no longer look myself in the mirror, I'd no longer be able to do what I've done. And I've made lots of mistakes. I've gotten it wrong lots of times, but I'm still hanging in there. And I'm still committed to myself. I'm still committed to God. I'm still committed to the, to the God that lives in all of us whether we are good or evil, whether we are Christian or Muslim or Jew or Hindu or Buddhist or some other religion or even no religion at all. No matter who we are, God is in all of us. There are no two creations here. There's one creation, the law of one. And any all of these old religions that are preaching polarization or separation, I'm saying, well, God's children are the elite establishment, an elite group of people that are somehow more special than other people. That's all bullshit. I'm sorry. That's all bullshit. We are one human race. We are one family 
under God, in Christ, in the Buddha, in the divine essence of all that is. We are all interconnected. It is one life. It is one love. It is one life. It is one truth. It is one joy, if we want to create that joy, or it is all one terror, if that's what we want to create. What is it that you're trying to create in your life? What is it that you're trying to accomplish? Are you trying to maintain the status quo of the old system of control and domination? Are you trying to maintain the corruption of the current political system in the United States and around the world? Are you trying to maintain your job, thinking that if you lose your job, you're somehow going to die because you're a policeman? because you're a soldier, because you're a lawyer, because you're a judge, because you're a politician, and you've, you've lived by the lie, you've lived by deceiving yourself, you've lived by non-truths. Are you going to wake up? Are you going to start stop hurting other people on command and stop thinking about what you're doing and how you're violating the natural law that says do no harm? That's a law of nature do no harm and you harm people and it's not like you're trying you're doing it to to survive like animals might eat another animal to to survive it's not like that at all you're doing it just to hurt because you get off on hurting people yeah i'm talking to you you know who you are i'm calling you to think about it I'm calling you to face the challenges you, you're you facing and to reconsider the, the actions that you're taking. Reconsider your own life and the path that you've chosen. And if you've, if you've chosen a path that is harmful to others, I suggest you get off the path and you turn around and you give your life, dedicate your life to God however you understand God to be. And I don't care how that is. I'm not trying to sell you any damned religion. And they're all damned religions. All of them are damned religions. I'm trying to get you to face yourself and to know that in you is the creator. You are the prodigal son, the prodigal daughter of the creator of all that is. Are you going to come home? Are you going to say, I'm sorry, father. I'm sorry, mother. I'm sorry, God and goddess. I'm sorry, please forgive me. I'm your son, I'm your daughter. And the father and the mother will embrace you. And I'm not gonna leave out the mother. That's what's wrong with most of our religions. They've left out the mother, the goddess. We need to embrace the feminine and be healed and be nurtured and be loved. Thank you for listening. Namaste.